Good morning, church. A few of us would like to say Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day, everybody. We love and miss you so much and can't wait to worship together again soon. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Tony and Lisa here. Just wanted to let you know we miss you so much. We can't wait to be together again. We're praying for you, and we just wanted to wish you a Happy Resurrection Day. Hi guys, happy Easter from our house to yours. We miss you very much and we're praying for you. God bless you and we'll see you real soon. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Marinaro family, we'd like to wish you and your family a happy Easter. We love and miss you guys. God bless you. God bless. Hi everybody, this is Steve Oak. Just wanted to wish you and your family a happy Easter. God bless each and every one of you. Love you. Hi, church family. We miss you, we love you, and we just want to wish you a happy Easter. And God bless you all. Hey, New Beginnings, Dave and Sarah here. We just wish you guys a happy Easter. We miss you so much, and uh, we can't wait to get back. Hope you guys are staying safe, staying close to the Lord, and uh, we'll see you soon. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We Stay love you in guys. the Word. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We love you. that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me. Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who sent me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation. sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave it has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise
you about why the resurrection of Jesus Christ should be important to you. There's no doubt that at some point in your life you've given time pondering questions like these. Can I have a relationship with God or is there life after death? Will God forgive me for the things that I've done wrong? And in the resurrection message we find the answers to these questions. The resurrection message is a message of hope. It's a message that brings peace. It's a message for everyone. And this is why God has made it a point that this message would be preached every single year since the resurrection of Christ and will continue to be preached until Christ returns. So let's consider that first question. Can I have a relationship with God? I want to draw your attention to the book of Acts, chapter 10. We'll be looking at verses 34 through 44. So Peter is the one who is proclaiming this message. And he is talking to a man named Cornelius and Cornelius' household. Cornelius is not a Jew, and yet he had a, a fear of God, and he wanted to know God in a personal way. And God had led Peter to Cornelius to share this beautiful message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how the resurrection of Jesus Christ impacts everyone and is for everyone. In verse 34, Peter says, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So here, Peter makes it very clear that salvation is for everyone, that anyone can have a relationship with God. Here, God is not partial. He doesn't favor one ethnic group over another. We know that the children of Israel were God's chosen people, but he had a plan for all people, even though he chose the nation of Israel, and he was the one who made the nation of Israel to become the nation that it has become. He wanted to use them as a representative of his grace and his love to the whole world. And once Christ came, the message of the gospel went beyond just the nation of Israel and it reached and is still reaching the whole world. And this message is a message of hope for everyone that anyone can have a relationship with God. God will accept anyone. Now Peter, he says that whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by God. And it's important to understand that Peter's not saying that we can earn our salvation because we understand from reading the scriptures that salvation is a gift. It's something that we don't deserve. It's something that we can't earn, that none of us are righteous and none of our righteousness would ever be able to meet the righteous requirements of God. So he's not talking about and work uh, receives salvation, uh, not at all. 
uh, he's talking about things that precede salvation, precede a right relationship with God. Now, Jesus gives greater clarity when he was asked this question, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Here, Peter, he talked about those who work or do works of righteousness. And Jesus was asked this question, what shall we do that we may work the work of God? Or, or what is the righteous works of God? What should we do? And so Jesus, he made this very clear. There's only one thing that we can do in a response to what God has done for us. And Jesus says in verse 29, this is John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 29. He said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. This is the only way that you and I can have a relationship with God. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the only one that God has approved of. He's the only one that God has sent to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. Jesus is the world's Savior. God is a global God, and He has sent His one and only Son to save and redeem lost man. Peter continues in verse 36 of Acts chapter 10. He said, The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. And so here Peter confirms that this message that brings peace, this message that anyone can have a relationship with God, is a message that we understand comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, here Peter says, He is the Lord of all. He is the Sovereign. He is the one that everyone must give an account to. The Bible tells us that everyone will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess He is Lord. And so every one of us has to respond to the Lord either now or in the future when we stand before His presence. But everyone is going to respond. There is no one that will be able to escape because as we're going to see that Jesus is the judge of the world. And so the best thing to do is to do it now while we're in this time of grace when you and I can have a right relationship with God simply through faith in what Jesus Christ has done. Uh, Peter makes it very clear that the preaching of peace, that you and I can have peace with God, it only comes through Jesus Christ who is the Lord of all. And in verse 37, Peter says, That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And here, Peter, he's pointing out the fact that Jesus is the Savior. He is the only one that can save a soul. And Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way to the Father except through me. And so Peter is pointing out that God anointed Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And that the evidence that Jesus is the Savior and that we can have a right relationship with God through faith in Him was all of the work that Jesus did. Jesus did things that no one else in all of history has done. Jesus walked on water. He fed multitudes of people with just a few loaves of bread and fish. And He healed so many people as the text tells us here that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And this is what Jesus has done. Jesus has done nothing but good for humanity. When he was here on the earth, he did things that benefited people. And still today, he is saving 
Jesus is still very much alive today. We don't see him. He rose and he has ascended. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. The scripture tells us that he's praying for us. But Jesus' message, the message of the cross, the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is still just as pertinent today as it was when it was first proclaimed. This message is a message that has relevance to you and to me, to all men right now. Jesus still is doing a good work in the life of people. And Jesus wants to do a good work in our marriages. Jesus wants to do good work in our relationships with other family members. Jesus wants to do a good work by using us to proclaim his love and his grace and his mercy. Jesus heals and restores lives. Jesus delivers people from bondage. Jesus, he is the one to trust because he still is doing good work, benefiting people. And Peter identifies Jesus as the one that God has chosen and that God was with him. Now, Peter, when he talks about Jesus, he doesn't talk about him as one who heard about the Lord, like I. I wasn't with Jesus. Um, Obviously, I have been born thousands of years after, a couple thousand plus years after Jesus was here on the earth. Everything I know, I know from what I've read in the scriptures and what people have told me. But as far as Peter is concerned, Peter was with Jesus. He was an eyewitness to all the things that Jesus had done. And Peter tells us in verse 39, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And when he says we are witnesses, of course, Peter wasn't the only eyewitness of what Jesus did. Uh, Peter was one among many. There was the apostles, all of Jesus' disciples. And there was multitudes of people who had seen Jesus do so many different miraculous works. But Peter, he says, I was an eyewitness. I was with Jesus, Peter being one of his disciples, one of the apostles. He was with Jesus When Jesus walked on water, he saw Jesus walk on water. When Jesus fed the multitudes, Peter was there. He saw Jesus perform the miraculous. He saw when Peter, or when Jesus healed people. Peter was there when Jesus rose a little girl from the dead. Peter was an eyewitness to all the good things that Jesus did. And then there came that point where Jesus was crucified. And Jesus, we know that he was killed, as it says in verse 39, whom they killed by hanging on the tree. Jesus was crucified for the sins of the world. Jesus, he hung there on that cross. Those six hours suffering, and he did it for you, and he did it for me. But the reason why Peter brings up the death of Christ is because it, has to happen before there's a resurrection. And Jesus is confirmed by Peter as an eyewitness that he had a physical, literal death. Here it tells us that God raised Jesus up on the third day. So he was killed. But after three days, Jesus rose from the grave and it was God that raised Christ up validating who Jesus is. Again, in verse 40, Peter says, Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. That is, Peter saying, I not only was an eyewitness to the ministry of Christ, but I saw Jesus after his resurrection. God raised him up and showed him openly. Not to all people, Peter says in verse 41, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. So Peter is very clear, saying, I was with him after his resurrection. I sat down with him, and we ate together after his resurrection. And I'm sure Peter he was just blown away to see the risen Christ and and to be with him. 
Peter could say, yes, I know for a fact Jesus was killed. And I know for a fact that Jesus rose from the grave. And not only me, but there were other eyewitnesses, many eyewitnesses. Uh, Paul tells us that there was over 500 eyewitnesses that saw the resurrected Christ at one time. And so there was many that saw the resurrected Jesus, and Peter was one among many. And this message of the resurrection, it was something that was commanded for the apostles to be preached. And because God wants this message to be heard by everyone, this is why the message continues to be preached every single year since the resurrection of Christ. But here in verse 42, Peter says, And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. So this is a message that was commanded for Peter and for the apostles to preach and also for every minister and every believer to continue to preach every generation. We are responsible for our generation. And a part of the message that is to be preached is that God ordained Jesus to be judge of the living and the dead. Christ is the authority of all people. For every generation, whether they're still here present and those that have died, we know the scriptures teach us that there will come a day of judgment. And I think it's important for us to consider how one of us, or one day, all of us are going to stand before God. We're going to stand before Christ, who is the judge of all people. And this is something that we should take serious, especially with the validation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God rose Jesus from the dead, which substantiates his claims that he was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God. It substantiates and validates his ministry because Jesus, his ministry, he went out healing and, and ministering to people as we already re read. He went out doing good for people and the resurrection validates his message, his ministry, all that he proclaimed to be as the Son of God. The resurrection validates it. And Peter is saying, not only does it validate who he is as far as the Son of God, it also validates the fact that he is the judge of all men. And one day we will stand before Christ to give an account of the things that we've done while we are here on the earth, which goes to show that there is life after death. There is life after death. Jesus rose from the dead, proving that there is life after death. And also, if you remember, when Jesus was there hanging on the cross between those two criminals, they were guilty for what they had done. But Jesus was completely innocent. He never had done anything wrong. Even Pontius Pilate, when Jesus was being tried, Pontius Pilate recognized that the only reason why he was there was because the Jewish leaders were envious of Jesus. But he recognized that Jesus, he was innocent. And he had stated that, that Jesus was an innocent man. And while Jesus, the innocent one, was there on the cross, hanging in the middle of those two criminals, one of those criminals after some hours of being there, because Jesus was on the cross uh, for six hours. And during that time, at first, one of the criminals, well, actually both of them, they were hostile towards Christ. But during that time, one of the criminals came under conviction and repentance. And he said, he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. He was dying, but he came under the realization that post this life, there is a kingdom. Christ is the king of the kingdom and that there is life after death. And so Jesus, his resurrection validates that indeed there is life after death. And where you will spend eternity, 
all uh, is a direct result of what you do with Christ. Now, moving forward, will God forgive me of the things that I've done wrong? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. This is why Christ came. This is why Christ died. And this is why Christ rose again, to redeem mankind, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Here in the last verse that we're going to be looking at in the book of Acts, verse 43, this was a part of the resurrection message that was commanded to be proclaimed. In verse 43, Peter says, To him all the prophets witnessed, that is, all the Old Testament prophecies witnessed to Christ, and Christ came. But here Peter says to him, all the prophets witnessed that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. That word remission is another way of saying forgiveness of sins. And I love the resurrection message. It's so powerful. It brings hope and it brings peace and it brings simplicity. Here, Peter says that through the name of Jesus, whoever believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins. So what will you do with what you've heard today? Maybe some of you, you already know this and you've already responded to Christ. But are you actively fulfilling the command that was given in that first century to the apostles, they were commanded to go out and share the resurrection message, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And maybe you've heard it several times. You've responded to it. You believe it, of course, and yet you're not sharing it. What are you going to do moving forward? I encourage you right now to make a, a decision to take the resurrection message more serious and to take it out, share it with somebody. I know right now we're in a time where we're restrict, restricted to meet, but there's different ways of sharing it. There's still ways, and we have to take the opportunities to and the advantage of the time that we're in to share the gospel message. So there are different ways through social media. Maybe it's important for you this week to send out a message to somebody. Maybe there's one or two people that God has been putting in your heart to reach out to, but you haven't. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a close coworker you've developed a relationship with. But when it comes to sharing the gospel, you've kept that to yourself. What are you going to do? You have to do something. God desires that you would share the love of Christ with other people. And I want to encourage you to do that even today. Ask the Spirit of God to lead you and how to get moving on that command that God has given. Now, some of you, maybe you haven't done anything. You've heard about Christ. You've heard about uh, salvation. You've heard about these things, but you haven't done anything. What are you going to do? Today is the day of salvation. God has made it so simple for you and for me to have a relationship with Him. God has proven that there is life after death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yes, God will forgive anyone who comes to Christ through faith, with faith, by faith, as Peter said, whoever believes in Him will be forgiven. Now, I want to give you an opportunity to make a decision to follow Christ. Paul, in Romans chapter 10, he says this, talking in a sense about the simplicity of being able to have a right relationship with God and to receive the gift of eternal life, which is only found in Jesus Christ. He says this, The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. This is the word of faith that he's talking about. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus 
and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is that simple. Right now, you can call upon the name of Jesus Christ. This is what the resurrection message is all about. It's all about salvation. It's all about Jesus coming to seek and save the lost. And you, you may recognize that, that you're lost. You don't have a right relationship with God. You don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you're concerned about your eternity. Where will you go? Or you've been concerned whether the Lord will forgive you because you know deep down inside all the wrong things that you've done. Well, let me tell you, those things don't matter. What matters is what you do now. If you make a commitment to Christ, He will forgive you. And it's so simple. Paul said that the word of faith is in your mouth. All you have to do is confess Christ as your Savior and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. If you want to commit your life to Christ, I want to lead you in a prayer, and you can do that right now. Just follow after me. Father, I thank you for your love and kindness in sending your son Jesus into this world. God, I recognize that I am a sinner and that Jesus is my Savior. Lord, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. And I commit my life to you. I pray that you'd forgive me and that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me all the days of my life that I would bring glory to you. And I thank you and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you made that commitment to Christ, I want to welcome you to the family of God. I pray that you feel and you sense God's presence with you and that that sense would continue to grow more and more each day as you walk with Jesus. There's a few things that are important for you to do now that you've made a commitment to Christ. One, read the Bible. It's important to have a regular habit of reading God's Word. That's how you're going to get to know Him. You can start in the Gospel of John, which reveals the deity of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is indeed God. He's God the Son. And the more that you get to know Jesus, the more you'll get to know God. So read a chapter a day of the Gospel of John. Also start talking with God. We call it prayer. You can just talk with God, pray, and cultivate a life of prayer. And then it's also important to tell others that you have made a commitment to Christ. And don't be afraid to share your faith. God will give you opportunities to do so. And so take those opportunities. You could even start today. You can send somebody a note, maybe a text or a FaceTime someone. Or you could even send me an email at info at nbcfellowship.org. Just letting us know that you made a commitment to Christ today. And then it's important also for you to get involved in a good church, a healthy church. I know we can't meet right now, but I'm pretty certain that that's only going to be for a few more weeks. It won't be much longer. And so start researching a good church that's near you. Uh, you'll always be welcomed at New Beginnings. And so if our church is the closest church to you um, or within driving distance, then uh, we certainly would love to meet you and, and see you. And we'll welcome you. And so God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of our online service. And may you continue to feel the presence of Christ in your hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen.
Children and their children, may his presence go before. 